Welcome to the first in a series of videos that we at DBI will be producing focusing on data management platforms or DMPs as they're more commonly known. So there's been a lot of buzz in the marketing world around DMPs, particularly in the last couple of years. So we thought this would be a good opportunity to create, create some videos around what DMPs are, the sorts of issues they're designed to solve and how they might fit into your organization. Um, typically, with new technology, there's, there's often misunderstanding about what the role of the technology is, um, what it can do. So, we, so hopefully these videos will, will go some way to, to clarifying that. Um, now, over the next few weeks, we'll be inviting different DMP vendors to come in and talk about uh, what DMPs are, um, the capabilities of, of their tools in particular, and some use cases that, that showcase the, the power of these platforms. Um, and we'll also have a short demo at the end of each discussion so you can so you can see the tool in action. For those of you that aren't aware, um, a DMP is a platform that allows you to effectively activate all the data that you collect throughout your organization. Um, and in a very, very basic level, it does this by taking multiple sources of data, um, be that first, second, third party or offline um, sources of data. It then aggregates, deduplicates and merges that data giving you a, a joined up view of your customer right across your different touch points, whether those be online or offline. Um, and, and the power of that really is that firstly, it, it allows you to create extremely in-depth customer segments based on this data. But, but more importantly, and fundamentally, a DMP is designed to, to push those customer segments to all your other marketing and advertising platforms so you can have highly targeted effective and relevant um, communication with your audience. So today we're joined by James Trudgen, who's the Head of Strategy, Data and Insight at Adobe. Um, and as I'm sure you're all aware, Adobe is one of the, the leading companies in the marketing and creative technology space, um, and in particular DMP world. Uh, so very well positioned to discuss the challenges that, that DMP is designed to solve. Um, so James, I mean, in the last couple of years in particular, there seems to be a real surge in, in the interest um, of DMPs. Um, what, what are the reasons, in your opinion, um, that that's, that's, that's happening? What are the kind of problems that a DMP is trying to solve? Okay, yeah, good question, Sean. Um, I think what they're trying to solve and what we see is, is, is businesses now are looking to put customer experience at the heart of what they do. And customer experience goes beyond someone going into a retail store and purchasing an item and having experience with that checkout assistant. It moves beyond um, the interaction you may have with an app and beyond what you may do in terms of text messages and how you reply to those. And digital just provides an, a whole new level of kind of complexity and a whole new data set. Um, and what we found is that businesses are managing those kind of customers in their various silos. So the CRM team will be managing the customer over there, not necessarily talking to the analytics team that when they see the customer on site, it may be given a different kind of customer ID. And what data management platforms are, are looking to solve is to bring all of those disparate data sets into one place, deduplicate those data sets, turn it into a people metric, and then be able to empower marketeers to take those metric, those people audiences and go and activate them and whether that's to make sure that when I go in store um, and I'm you know looking to, for a test drive on a car the acknowledge I've previously browsed the website you acknowledge that I'm, my car's due for service but it's just that it's building that relationship between the customer and the brand. So that's quite interesting because I think traditionally there's, there's perhaps a perception that a DMP is focused around the digital space and, and digital data but from what you've just said it actually seems that it's much bigger than that. It is much bigger than that, and, and that's why it's kind of harder to articulate um, the benefits because when we talk to our to businesses, um, you, you need to speak to everyone from all the different verticals within a business um, because they don't realise what a DMP can, lock, can unlock for their particular area. Um, for example, you know, the CRM team, if they could start embracing that web behaviour data into their CRM records, um, they can push that then back into a targeting platform to acknowledge that this person... Um, you know, is about to cancel a contract or has been ha unhappy before, and actually then that person gets a personalised experience and a, an offer to upgrade for a discounted price. It makes the, the consumer happier, but it also then makes the, the business much happier because they are managing their customers rather than the devices and the various touch points that they've got. 
often um, we all hear sort of organisations or, or people talk about um, their technology tool setups and say, oh, well, we already do some of that stuff. And so there's perhaps a, a feeling that, that they, they don't need a DMP or that they're, they're actually already doing a lot of what it does. Um, but I mean, why, um, why do sort of current tools fail to solve a lot of the problems that a DMP is focused on? That's a good question. Um, because mo most kind of current tools are, you know, point solutions, right? And it, what DMP is solved for is the deduplication of a user across multiple data sets. And, you know, if you have a point solu solution from vendor A there, one from vendor B, C, D, E, you can't bring all that into a place and deduplicate it and give it one platform-wide ID, which you can then go and do something with. You can't turn all of those easily into a people metric and then go out and activate. Um, so that's, that's why. I mean, many, many businesses do believe um, that they can, they can solve part of what a DMP does, and they have these massive data sets there. The core to what a DMP does is not just bringing it together. It's being able to kind of deduplicate those, those users, turn them into something that marketeers understand, right? People, not devices, because ultimately it's people that purchase and not devices. But then push it out. Right? When I say push it out, it may be to a demand-side platform. It may be to a... Um, a web analytics tool for further reporting. It may be to a personalization tool. It may be to a, an ad server, but to do something with. And I think that is one of the core pieces of uh, integration that, that kind of many businesses just cannot do. Okay, okay, that's interesting. So it feels that really activating that data is, is the heart of what a DMP is ultimately, um, or why it's useful, I guess, and taking all that information, actually making it uh, usable across different platforms. And and, and in that respect, I mean, how does it how does it sit within a current uh, marketing stack? Well, we we see it kind of like at various businesses will have different responsibilities, and there's you know I think the market is still slightly too immature to have a kind of a, a head of uh, head of DMP. Um, you know, you have a chief digital officer, you have a CMO, you maybe have a head of, head of head of analytics, but you need someone to kind of bridge all that and take ownership of the customers. And in different organisations, that ownership falls to, to, to someone different. But, you know, the DMP sits kind of between advertising technology and marketing technology. That's, that's the kind of way we see it. It's kind of the glue that joins the both together. So, you know, when you're looking at your analytics, you can see all the great things that have happened on your website, all the, all the things that you need to action because the, the, the cart abandon is. What you then need to be able to do is quickly take that from a historical look back to a, right, proactively, what can I do now with that segment? Um, and that's kind of where it fits. So the ownership we see, you know, we see heads of analytics moving into that world. We see, um, you know, some CMOs now kind of creating these kind of, um, you know, head of data roles. And that's where the, the DMP responsibility falls. But at, at its heart, it's, it's someone that can bring all of those silos of a business together to realize how a DMP can impact and improve what they're doing in their, in their own part of the business. I mean, it sounds like there's, I mean, when you, when you invest in a DMP, there's potentially, you also have to invest around resource as well. Would that be, would that be fair to say? I, I think you need to make sure that your business is structured accordingly. And I think, you know, what we've seen with many of our customers is they're, they're using a DMP at the core part of their, of their, dis, of their business transformation. Um, and that's quite an interesting piece because business transformation um, is something that we use partners such as DBI to help us with. Um, because, you know, our customers need, need that kind of strategic advice and say, okay, right now, because I, these are the objectives I want to fulfill as a business, what tools do I need to do that? And in many cases, a DMP will be a core part of that. Okay, what people do I need to get the best out of these tools and what strategies should I follow? And I think that's crucial in terms of where partners then support, um, you know, our technology. And, and of course, I mean, a, a DMP, it's, it can be quite an investment. Um, that's potentially... One of the one of what might be one of the blockages for people looking at or seriously considering a DMP. I mean, how how do you build a business case internally um, for a DMP and making that investment and making that leap forward? First and foremost, you park a DMP over there and you don't confuse anyone with the technology, right? You first talk to the business and understand where their kind of challenges are. You understand what they're trying to achieve as a, a business and then perhaps advise based on the experience you've got with other people in that in that. Uh, industry. And once, you know, those, those kind of business objectives become obvious, you then look at the kind of the, the use cases you want to solve for. 
And some of those typical ones that we see with, with customers that invest in data management platforms are kind of media efficiency would be, would be one that springs to mind. So, you know, spending lots of budget trying to attract new customers across multiple DSPs, but not being, but not really knowing um, who they're hitting and when with those with those messages. So how can they kind of use a DMP to you know help them stitch uh, devices together to target people more than to target device to make sure that they're you know their advertising pounds euros or dollars are spent much more efficiently. Excluding known customers out there, media buyers a great one that we've seen customers experience some really significant ROI on. Um, but also just that 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 ability to personalize a journey and coming back to my first point about you know customer experience being key well you know what as as a business i want to make sure that james has you know a relevant experience on phone tablet desktop and i've got a technology behind that that can help me you know deterministically stitch that together so i am you know making sure that those those messages are sequential and they're relevant to the, the to james and the other people like him that i'm targeting and sometimes that's more challenging for 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 companies to, to look at an ROI. Um, and then, you know, the third part is, you know, prospecting. So how can they use the technology to, you know, look at their high value customers that they've already got and then go and find other customers that have a high propensity to look like those, you know, using some kind of algorithmic modeling that's baked into many of the, of the DMPs. And it means then they're, you know, again, their, their prospecting money is much more efficiently spent. Um, and the final piece is just being able to optimize so once you do that and you push those audience segments out for activation somewhere, you might find that actually this, this segment is not performing. You know, that you're, you're after male high net worth, but actually the, the net worth part of that segment is not, is not clicking on that creative. So having a tool that's got the reporting that enables you to actually optimize and you know, change that segment on the fly and then cap that across all of the various DSPs you do so you, you control that media efficiency is another one of the key, um, key points. Um, so James, I was just wondering if you could maybe go through a couple of use cases where you think the DMP has been really useful and been able to solve a lot of those problems that we've um, we've just been discussing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, there's a couple that spring to mind, Sean. Um, you know, we've we've got um, many kind of like digital broadcasters that that, that understand um, where a DMP can fit, and they're quite interesting use cases because they go kind of you know, to the next level. When we think of devices and people, we think going into a shop, we think iPads, um, we think tablets, we think uh, desktops. But they bring another, um, you know, an, another channel to market, which is TV. Um, and so what they're finding is the ability to stitch that, that person at a household level um, or, or at a person level across those devices is really quite powerful. But why is that powerful? Think about content recommendation. So, you know, you, you've watched a football game on, on uh, TV and then later on you might be on, a, on your phone browsing something else. That acknowledgement that you've consumed that content could serve up something much more relevant. You know, for example, Liverpool versus Dortmund is on tonight and you would get that kind of prompt because, you know, you've consumed that content. But also turn it over from, a, from an advertiser's perspective. You know, if you're a large advertiser um, that, 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 you know, that put your dollars through and your pounds through, um, broadcasters, the ability to offer sequential advertising, so advert on TV, is it consumed, yes or no? If it isn't, resend it the next time that consumer's on an iPad or when they're on a train, or when they're on a desktop. Um, just really kind of thinking about you know, the right message at the right time and the right device. So I think that's quite, that's quite an interesting one. Um, and then you think about publishers, right? Pu traditional kind of publishers in, in terms of news brands. Um, and, you know, I hark back to, to, to my previous life as well. It's like, how do we monetize these, these great audiences we've got, um, you know, beyond, you know, the kind of display revenue on, on, the, on the sites? Well, what a DMP can solve for there is, one, enriching the knowledge about those users. So you can, you can package up, you know, your audience segments and sell the segment rather than just, you know, run of site or site section to the advertiser. But also you can look to kind of like, you know, put those segments together and then trade them. You know, there's a big data economy out there and you can trade them in a second party way to kind of like sell your audiences through through a marketplace, through the data management platform, which gives you a different way of monetizing those users. And I think thirdly and, and kind of like finally from a publisher perspective, 
And you know, many are, are looking at you know, whether they've got kind of print subscribers or they've got um, paywalls on their sites. They're looking to understand you know, where that level should be, how they can find more of those users. And you know, we talked earlier about the, the algorithmic modeling. So you know, think about um, you know, one of the large news brands that have got a, a core um, loyal audience base that may take out an annual subscription. Um, you know, using that, that base and modeling that base out to find a prospect to find more people that are likely to subscribe is really quite a powerful use case. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean that's that's um, focus very much on on publishing. I think that's a, seems to be a very relevant one. Are there any other industries which which you've found um, that have been where DMPs work particularly well? I think where DMPs seem to be kind of hitting the mark at the moment is very much in the FSI um, area and very much around kind of like that cross-sell and upsell. So, you know, think of yourselves as, um, you know, you'll, you'll access your bank on your, on your phone um, and then maybe later on the, on the desktop. So you're authenticating, which is great. So that, that helps a, a DMP to kind of, you know, stitch you across those multiple devices. But also looking at that and adding in some like other second party data. Um, you'll be able to use that to actually upsell. So, for example, you may be on a large, um, you know, French bank website, and then later on on a, on a publisher site, they could serve you up a message for insurance because they realise that you're you're in market for that. So, the ability to define the customers on site, target off site with relevant kind of opportunities that are informed based on your kind of what they know, what, what the brand knows about you because of those touch points you have is really quite a powerful one. So James, you mentioned that a, a DMP is very much kind of central in terms of the, um, in terms of the marketing stack that an organization has. But obviously, you know, Adobe has a very uh, well-known um, comprehensive set of, of marketing tools themselves. I mean, how, how does the DMP fit within, within your own suite of tools? Yeah, I think it's fair to say that, that Adobe sees the DMP as kind of like the heart of our marketing cloud and its technology powers many of our other products such as um, Adobe Analytics, Adobe Target um, and, and you know some of the others. But where it really kind of resonates and, and, and where we've now got that integration kind of working very slick is you know, if our customers are there using analytics day in, day out um, and you know, they're, they're discovering audiences and they're reporting on those audiences, they want to be able to do something with them quickly, right? It's not about just downloading an Excel report, creating a pivot table, sharing that amongst 20 stakeholders, having a conversation. You know, it's about the workflow and the integration. You create it once in one of the tools and then you share it right, across the other tools to, to activate. So an example would be, um, you, you know, you notice from your analytics report, you get a trigger saying there's been an, an anomaly on your website and you, drew, you go into analytics and, you, and you're the, the chief analyst and you say, okay, right, what was that anomaly? And the analytics will tell you where it is. You drill down and it says, these are the influencing factors for that anomaly. And it may be that, um, you know, the, um, you know, the number of purchases for, um, you know, a dining room uh, table set has gone up by 100% versus the last kind of um, 90 days. What influenced that? Oh, actually, drill down. It was referred us from, um, you know, this site, looking on that, and there was a great article about it. So what do you want to do? Actually, you want to take that segment you want to push that into uh, Adobe Target and you want to then use that to personalize your web experience to those users. You also think, actually, I want to go and find more of those. So you just share that to the cloud, you push that into Audience Manager, and then you can enrich with second and third party data, or you can just use the modeling te technology to go find users that exhibit similar traits and then target those with media or target those in your site using Adobe Target. Um, or uh, Experience Manager, which is our content management system. And then, you know, if you want to go, go buy, you can use um, Adobe Media Optimizer, which is our, our DSP and then search and display bidding tool. Um, so it fits quite nicely, but what we find is, is the real kind of the killer point is that workflow. So, you know, using the interface that we have there is you don't send emails and texts to your colleagues. You kind of, you manage that. The, the cloud gives you the ability to collaborate amongst your colleagues in different areas of the business. So you create it, you type it, you type a message, you share the board with Sarah. Sarah, please look at this anomaly. You know, what it, can you let me know what it is? Sarah will get a notification. She'll click in, she goes straight into the report, she sees what it is, she updates um, the comments, someone else then pushes that segment into another part of the cloud that then activated perhaps in um, Audience Manager, which is the DMP. And then things are done, right? So it's, it's a kind of collaboration. Um, area 
because those, those products work so seamlessly together. But the core is, once you create an audience, that same audience is available through the other products. And as we, we, we spoke at the very beginning, it was about making sure that you treat the, the customer you know, in the same way. You acknowledge that it's, that it's that same person and that's what it enables you to do. Sure, sure. And um, just for the, for the sake of neutrality, though, I'm assuming the, the, the Adobe DMP is, is agnostic, isn't it? Tool agnostic. So if, if you may, let's say you, you have the Adobe DMP, but you use different um, third party tools for different parts for your marketing stack, presumably there are integrations for all of those. And, and that's, you know, kind of what we pride ourselves with because, you know, originally uh, we were built as a, as a, a traditional DMP, which meant, you know, that the integrations we have both outbound and inbound um, are agnostic. Um, so, you know, it's up to the marketeer to say, actually, I want to, I want to send my audience segments to this destination. And we make sure that we've got all of those well-known integrations there, but we have the flexibility for our customers to say, actually, I want to work with this partner in Germany. I want to work with this partner um, in France. You know, can you set that up? And we do. Um, because then the benefit goes to, to all of the other customers. And whether that's, you know, plugging into other analytics vendors, you know, we do that. Whether it's other, um, you know, uh, optimizing tools, we do that. Ad servers, DSPs, you know, we are, we, you know, we are 100% agnostic. Um, so I think now um, I'd like, well, it'd be great to have a, a quick demo of the tool just to see what the main um, features are and, and how, how it works at a more functional level. Um, so I think we'll, we'll jump into that now for the next few minutes. But thanks very much for speaking to us. It's been, been very helpful, very insightful. First, Adobe Audience Manager allows you to consolidate data sets from various sources, giving you a powerful 360-degree profile of your client's customers. These data sources include information your clients have collected on their own, such as CRM, point of sale, and web engagement data as well as information collected and shared by partners. A third source of information can be data that has been purchased to augment your client's data. Adobe Audience Manager analyzes these different types of information to better define and refine your audiences. Second, Adobe Audience Manager performs cross-device identification that merges profiles across devices and households, matching devices back to a single individual or household to ensure maximum relevancy. Adobe Audience Manager is engineered to identify and collect any form of identity, mobile ID, authenticated ID, declared ID, and so on, to create more accurate and more comprehensive customer profiles. Third, Audience Marketplace, a feature within Adobe Audience Manager, offers a brokerage of high-value audiences that can be activated for cross-channel digital campaigns. It provides the information and controls that allow companies to buy and sell data assets in a trusted and transparent environment. This allows agencies to monetize data by creating new revenue streams on owned and operated data assets. Adobe Audience Manager makes it easier, faster, and more cost-efficient to organize data from Adobe Marketing Cloud, acting as a single data platform for customer information across digital marketing solutions. Adobe Audience Manager can also integrate with solutions beyond the marketing cloud, including your client's CRM, analytics, and other marketing platforms, making your marketing even more powerful.